to my second video. I'm the POV Traveler and today we're going to be explaining the basic elements of PYT. Welcome back to my second video and thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing and supporting this channel. Uh, today we are going to be having a discussion on why the PYP is so different, what is so special about the PYP and uh, how teachers teach in a PYP curriculum, in a PYP framework. Um, due to the nature of the PYP, there is a lot of information that has to be discussed. As a PYP traveler, I always have my backpack with me and I have my uh, toolbox of um, my toolbox of PYP here. The reason why you will see I'm using hard disk drives, um, it's not random. I have my purpose why I'm doing this. As you all know, um, a hard disk drive is is a storage of information. It's a storage of knowledge. And um, whatever you put inside, you can edit it, you can learn from it, you can view it, you can share it, and it can long last. Before I start with those uh, elements, I have to say uh, for the teachers out there that uh, know about pedagogy so far, um, it's a holistic program. PYP is a holistic program. Uh, it's an inquiry-based program, it's a concept-based program, it's a conceptual approach. So you don't have to learn anything by heart that you can find it just by clicking on Google and that's it. So what the PYP is focusing more is the ways that a child can find information and use it not only in school but also use it in their daily life and in the future. The IB, the PYP especially, is not focused on exams, it's not focused on assessments, and the evaluation is not for testing. Um, we assess skills. We assess, um, we assess how, how students think, how students cooperate, how students uh, evolve their, um, their relationships with the, with the other peers. Uh, what the IB educators that work in the organization did very well is that they tried to recognize those very important specific skills and um, those attributes that you can find to define a student, to define their learning, and they made those, those categories, those elements. First and foremost uh, element of uh, a PYP curriculum is the transdisciplinary themes. What does this mean? So first of all, transdisciplinary is an adjective. So that, uh, which is aparted from two words, trans and disciplinary. So disciplinary means, it comes from a discipline. So uh, for example, we have the discipline of math, we have the discipline of, the discipline of science, the discipline of social studies, the, we have many disciplines. Trans means going through, so the, the knowledge, the teaching, goes through the disciplines. And uh, this is the core, the foundation, the starting point from, all, from where all the inquiry happens. Um, so the, the curriculum is actually in the PYP, we have the EY and the PYP, which is early years program and PYP, primary years program. But both of those subcategories, they are all united in PYP, in the primary years program. First two EY classes um, have four units of inquiry. So the, the curriculum is um, separated in four units, four big chunks of information, let's say. Whereas from EY3 up to grade five, we have six units of inquiry. So a very brief description of those six transdisciplinary themes uh, is that I would like to label them right now so you have an idea, is who we are, how we express ourselves, how we organize ourselves, how the world works, uh, sharing the planet and where we are in place and time. 
Uh, those six transdisciplinary themes are cascaded down, uh, a lo you know, like a, uh, across the year, and uh, all the classes in the PYP have to uh, complete a unit in each of those six transdisciplinary themes. After this one, we have the key concepts. So the key concepts are, are the tools that we use to form questions. So by answering to the questions of those key concepts, students um, learn the knowledge by themselves. They have to learn how to ask questions though. The www aids uh, words to create questions in order to get more information from what they ask. And those words are who, where, why, when, and how. So as you will see, if you think by yourselves, um, if you ask questions starting with those words, you will not receive an answer with yes or no. You have to receive a full answer. You will have to, you are demanding by, by the one who you are asking the question, to give you more information about a topic. And this is what we are training students to do during the day by using the key concepts in all the questions uh, posed across the day in all the subjects that we have in the classroom, in the PYP classroom. Those key concepts uh, can be introduced in many ways. They have to be um, addressed daily and uh, regularly. Uh, if you use them consistently, then students will use them as well because they learn by watching you. You are the role model as a teacher. So if you ask questions with those words, they will have to do the same. And uh, it will not be, you know, it will not be natural in the beginning of the school year. But once you start this and you are consistent with this and you put your visuals on the walls, will be using them, you will be having open-ended tasks, you will be having alternative tasks. It will be all around the place. So key concepts are your tools as well, and you have to use them uh, appropriately. Another uh, essential element of the PYP is the learner profiles. So the learner profiles are very important because uh, they are the attributes that the IBO wants uh, the learners that graduate from that system to have uh, in their personality to have in them. Um, the reason for this is that once you hear, once you listen those learner profiles, uh, you will understand that they form a law-abiding global citizen that um, can live peacefully and be a role model around the world. Uh, so those learner profiles that the PYP fosters during their lessons are inquirers, thinkers, knowledgeable, balanced, reflective, communicators, principled, open-minded, caring, and risk-taker. Um, those words may seem just a simple vocabulary, but this has to be used uh, very regularly in the PYP classroom as well, because those words uh, actually give the initiative to the students to act as uh, as such. Uh, so activities that take place in the classroom, games, um, rewards, uh, competitions, and last but not least, uh, students are developing their ATL skills, which is an abbreviation for approaches to learning. So those ATL skills uh, include thinking skills, social skills, communication skills, self-management skills, and research skills skills are developed throughout the program and they can be consciously um, developed or unconsciously. For example, if you are doing reading sessions uh, in the classroom, you are, the students are developing their reading skills, which reading skills are a subcategory of thinking skills. So there you have it. But you can also have it in a subconscious way. For example, if you have two children that are fighting and you are promoting the caring learner profile, the feedback um, from uh, the two boys and how they feel about what happened, what would change in a different situation, what would they do differently, or if they feel bad and how they can feel better. 
So if the children that were in a fight, they answer to those questions and they become friends by the end of that incident, then they would have they would have advanced and they would have enhanced uh, not only their caring learner profile, but also their social skills because they, they learn how to resolve conflict. So all those connections, they are happening in the classroom, but we have to be conscious, then you will be able to make advancements and enhancements uh, for each student individually. That was it guys for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe and like the video if you want. And uh, see you next week with some more exciting content. So take care. Have a nice day.